I studied French as a major in undergrad, but as I grew, I realized I wanted to do something different in not just my country, but in my continent or in my West African region. So I decided to go into international development and AU was one of the really good schools during my search. AU was one of the really good schools for international development. I'm studying international business here in the School of International Service. Um, I'm, I'm very passionate about business, but I'm also very passionate about business that makes a difference. I love people, I love children, I love education. I love dancing, I love cooking. No, I do not love cooking. I don't know how I almost slipped and said that, but um, I love a lot of things. So just trying to like compress all that love and use it for what I realize is my real love, which is to you know, help with mental health awareness and stigma and um, just helping people feel better about themselves. I wanted to come to American University because I wanted to be in school in DC. Like, I wanted to be a lawyer. I was sure I wanted to be a lawyer. I went to a uh, law and public policy magnet school. And so like, that's something that I wanted to follow up in college. But when I got here, like, I started realizing that I'm less concerned with like, kind of like enforcing the law and like implementing the law and like more of where, the, where does the law come from and how can we influence it and like, what can we do to like, make it start and get those conversations started. I am a sophomore at American University. Um, I am studying international relations and I'm also studying business administration. These are the faces of first generation African student leaders destined to make an impact. So you're from Botswana and you'd like to go back. Why is that important to you? My role as a young African again is sort of going back, having learned and acquired all this um, education and all these skills, and going back and actually implementing them on the ground and making sure that policies are enacted, policies that are right, policies that you know benefit everyone. Not only in the U.S., but in their respective countries of origin, even if they aren't sure what that impact looks like just yet. Business that makes a difference, not just business for profit, but business with a purpose and actually impacting people's lives. I'm in international development with a focus in global health, and usually when we talk about development, it's all about, oh, you know, economic livelihoods, you know, do something with yourself. But my question was, well, if the person is not healthy enough to even work, how do they do something with themselves? So that got me into global health, the global health section of international development. Biggie, Deborah, Sua, Fita, and Kadisha study at American University School of International Affairs. Each have career ambitions and ethnic backgrounds as distinct, well, as the African nations they represent. Hello, my name is Deborah Sarfon and I'm from Ghana, West Africa. Hi, I'm Fida Akranade and I'm a first generation Nigerian. I'm Swa and I am a African, African American. Uh, I'm Khadija Ba, I am from Sierra Leone. All fascinating in their own right, perhaps Biggie stands out most. America is perceived to be this um, glory land, you know, the promised land. And yes, he is named after that Biggie. <laughs> My brother named me after Biggie the Rapper. He really did? He really did. Seriously? And my parents... No African name for you? Yeah, hip-hop was a very popular thing for me growing up. My brother was heavily influenced by Biggie and Tupac, obviously. And, um, you know, he just named me Biggie. I was born in 1993, and that's when Biggie was also kind of hip. American influence is strong on the continent, especially in his democratically governed country of Botswana, but the perhaps prophetic name more aptly underscores his visionary persona. Botswana is actually one of the, it's a special country in Africa. There's never been any war. It's very democratic. The system itself is very well governed and um, it's very peaceful. Biggie is on a full academic scholarship as part of AU's Emerging Global Leaders Program. Having completed his studies in just three years, he graduates early this spring with an expected degree in international business and has big plans when he returns home. You see a lot of young Africans getting educated here. I mean, now there's a change. You see people going back, but you know, historically you'd have people move out of Africa and stay. But sort of now you're seeing sort of my generation going back and trying to fit in. It's a bit difficult because you've been away for a few years and you don't really know what to, where to start, really. So, I mean, yeah, I totally agree with her that, you know, there should be like a movement where you're seeing people actually going into the ground and actually doing work. He's not the only one with sights set on the continent's emerging nations. I believe that um, if you're talking about change in Africa, 
it should basically come from the people themselves. It will be more long-lasting that way, it will be more meaningful. So um, basically it was out of this is your land and what are you doing to make a difference. And the second reason was I personally thought a career shouldn't be just something that will enrich me and make me fulfilled, but it should also be something that would be poured back into my society. So the basic question for me was, how does my career impact my country? My role is, is like using my voice, but also putting a face to a problem. Um, especially like in the United States, like the treatment of black people in the United States is terrible. So using that as like I guess like the forefront of like relations in Africa like it's very hard for me to imagine this country taking large like taking a lot of investment and putting it into an African nation which is full of people that are black when people here that are black are not treated well. I do have an interest in health but also have an interest in education and then after my second year they got the new major of public health so I declared a major in public health and um, it took me a while to figure out what I wanted to do with that because it's such a huge field but now I realize that I'm particularly interested in the field of mental health um, just because of my own personal experiences and the experiences of my family. Um, I just want to work towards making a more happy and healthy person like if you look at a lot of these African countries like I went to Ghana for the first time last Christmas and I didn't know what to expect but I'm just expecting the worst like you know I'm like okay is there gonna be internet or like am I like how am I gonna shop like I mean unfortunately this is just like my view of what Africa is and I get there and it was the most beautiful place and one thing that I will take from that experience was that the people were so happy I am a uh, SIS and business admin major. And so I'm really interested in trying to connect business like ventures and like trade between like developing countries so they can kind of help each other rather than, you know, like a parent country like looking over them. Um, and then also I noticed, uh, I went to Sierra Leone a few years ago and um, and my aunt had the same experience how, you know, people were trying to bring like books for education in their schools. And I mean, that was great and that was needed, but people were like, we need jobs. And that was like a really big thing for me trying to figure out how um, I can be in that, you know, that puzzle and that conundrum trying to figure out um, what I can do to help that. I've seen quite a bit um, just because my country went through a civil war and then now uh, we're kind of trying to get over the Ebola uh, crisis going on. So I know that um, there's a point where the people that are here to help kind of leave and there's a point where they're like, okay, what do we do now for ourselves? Right now anyway, while I'm studying, I'm trying to get involved in administrative work and like the office things. Um, but then when I graduate, I definitely want to go back for at least a year or two. Culturally speaking, the American experience is an important draw, particularly among those who are direct immigrants in the group. But while some cultural norms are an expected part of U.S. immersion and ties to African culture strong, it's clear to both citizens and non-citizens that some barriers still need breaking down. So what would you say are the pros and cons, culturally speaking, relative to your experience here and with Africa? What I really, really enjoyed about the U.S. is the idea of individualism and that you as a person, you, you as one person matter and that you have to grow as a person and learn a lot about yourself and pursue what you actually love to pursue, what you'd love to pursue. And that to me, I think, is something that is heavily needed in Africa. But I, one of the pros I find in Africa is sort of that family system. That you, you don't really have a lot of homeless people in Botswana, by the way, in South Africa, because you always have an auntie or an auntie's cousin's auntie somewhere mm -hmm. where you can stay. I think society here is very, very divided. And I think, obviously, not just race, even class and all that stuff. And we also have that in Africa, sadly. Um, so it's very difficult to sort of have an inclusive society that is free to open, is free to talk about issues that affect you know, every group of per people in the society. They are as diverse as the makeup of the international school here at American University, but if there is one tie that perhaps binds this group of African students together, it's the notion of what's called a hybrid identity. The idea of hybrid identity is really the fact that what happens is that as you begin to kind of in many ways own the intersection of identities, you embrace all of who you are. And so you're no longer just, you're no longer just X. You're X and Y, 
and you understand that those two things coming together is really what makes you somewhat unique in many ways, while at the same time, it also binds you to other people. So for example, I mean, I think as Sua mentioned, you know, a part of her for a period of time, because she was raised within an, an, an African-American environment, that's the identity that she embraced. And also that's the identity that she could own because in the outside world, there was such a rejection of the African identity. But as she grew up and as she began to kind of in many ways be exposed to the African side, she began to own that as well, but without rejecting the American side. And that's what a hybrid identity really is. While at times conflicted, these burgeoning trailblazers won't be defined by the masses or held back from what they see as a future filled with potential. And where do you see yourself 10 years from now? I'm really passionate about Africa. Everything I think about is Africa and about what I want to do in the future. Whenever I see a new technology, I think about how it can impact the con a country in the continent and an industry in the continent. And um, I'm also very passionate about business. I do believe in you know, making profit, but making profit that actually you know, impacts people and makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And um, I think policy making, that's one of the reasons why I'm studying the international business here in the School of International Service. I think policy has to be very effective. Policy has to be driven by data. And policy has to be very inclusive. And I think the three of those, in 10 years, obviously, I might maybe see myself um, in government somewhere, or sort of maybe in the regional governmental bodies like you know, the Southern African um, Development Community or the African Union. 10 years from now, um, probably in Congress. Whatever it is I'm doing, I know that I'm going to be happy. That's the first thing. And two, I'll probably be working in the field of like mental health, probably maybe like a social worker or like uh, maybe I'll be the leader of like a nonprofit. I like to be in the policy sphere ensuring that um, health is accessible by all Ghanaians. I love Sierra Leone so I'll probably be there. When you think of Africa, this is in fact the face of Africa. Africa is so much more complex than I think people begin to understand. But I think also the reason why I say this is the face of Africa is because really I think in anywhere in the world, really the young people are really the future of any parts of the world. And the young people that you've had an opportunity to speak to are folks with aspirations. They're folks who really have big dreams, but also these are folks who really are in many ways investing in an education that hopefully can allow them to make the change that is very much needed in the societies that they're part of. So if you ask me as a sociology, if you ask me as an African, if you ask me now as an American, and if you ask me as an administrator who's dedicated 23 years to education, I have tremendous hope for the future. Because when I talk to our young people, I think they understand the complexity of issues, but I think more than that, they have the courage to want to really enact change, and that is exactly how change comes to be. And they all have hopes for a geopolitical landscape that, while far from perfect, will help make those dreams a reality for their generation as well as the next. Leaders that are innovative, leaders that are young, <laughs> and leaders that understand how the world works. If we learn to respect each other as Africans, before we even ask for respect from outside, if we have leaders that actually respect us as young people, that respect the people that voted them into power, I think, you know, just basically respecting the people that, you know, you serve and understanding that you serve these people. You don't, they don't work for you, you work for them.